गुड मॉर्निंग डियर फ्रेंड्स टुडे विल लर्न अबाउट इन्फेक्शियस बर्शल डिजीज इन्फेक्शियस बर्शल डिजीज इज एन एक्यूट हाईली कॉन्टेजियस लिम्फोसाइटोलाइटिक इम्यूनोसप्रेसिव डिजीज ऑफ यंग चिकन्स कैरेक्टराइज बाय नेक्रोसिस एंड डिप्लीशन ऑफ लिम्फोइड टिश्यू पर्टिकुलरली द बर्शा ऑफ फेब्रिशियस Infectious bursal disease is also known as infectious bursitis or gumboro disease as first outbreak occurred in area of gumboro of USA Infectious bursal disease is a considered uh, is a oil state disease and they have very important economic importance as the economic importance of this disease is manifested in two ways first one up to 60% mortality in chickens up to 3 weeks of age or older birds as well as the survived birds will show severe prolonged immunosuppressions and due to immunosuppressions there will be a secondary either bacterial viral infections occurs and it will leads to death of the animals now we'll move, move towards etiology infectious bursal disease is a viral disease and this is caused by infectious bursal disease virus the infectious bursal disease virus is a double standard bi segmented rna virus belongs to genus avibirna virus and family birnaviridae this abdv can be divided into two main serotypes by virus neutralization test serotype 1 and serotype 2 among these two serotype only serotype 1 is pathogenic serotype 1 and serotype 2 can affect ducks and turkey but do not cause disease in this species serotype 2 does not protect against serotype 1 infection so there will be no any cross protections cross immunity as well as most important one is very virulent abd strain is present in europe asia south america as well as in africa now we talk about host the clinical disease are mainly seen in chickens chickens younger than 10 weeks of age are usually clinically affected older chickens will not show any type of clinical signs and white leg hounds are specially susceptible for abd birds between 1 to 14 days of age are less sensitive because of maternal antibodies uh, some other birds like turkeys ducks fowl pheasants ostrich may be affected by this virus but there will be no any clinical signs seen in this species transmission the fecal oral route is a main method of transmission of this virus direct contact with the contaminated feet waters dropping and litter materials are mainly responsible for transmission of this disease now we will see about pathogenesis abd virus serotypes have a tropism for precursor b lymphocytes precursor b lymphocytes are actively dividing cells that contain surface immunoglobulin m and such type of cells are considered as precursor b lymphocytes precursor b lymphocytes are nothing but they are cells which contain immunoglobulin m on their surface in chicken bursha is at its maximum development between 3 to 6 week of age and have a highest number of precursor b lymphocytes between 3 to 6 week of age and this is the reason why 
Abid virus mainly target this bursa during this breaks. And due to this reason, this precursor lymphocytes are in maximum number between three to six of, uh, of age, and it make this birds highly susceptible for the infection. After oral infection, the virus will enter into the body and through the body it will reach into the gut associated lymphoid tissue and initially this virus will replicate in this gut associated lymphoid tissue. From this gut associated lymphoid tissue this virus will reach into the liver probably it will replicate inside the liver and slowly and slowly it will enter into the blood and it will cause primary viremia. Through this blood circulations, this virus will reach into the bursa and inside the bursa it will infect precursor B lymphocytes. This is the main target of this virus. This particular virus will replicate inside the B lymphocytes, precursor B lymphocytes and slowly and slowly it will induce lysis during the replications they will come out from the inf uh, infected cells it will induce lysis and again infect another precursor B lymphocytes and this per cycles will go on very very for few days due to lysis of precursor B lymphocytes there will be large amount of virus will be released into the circulation and ultimately there will be formation of second and pronounced viremia this virus which are present into the blood it will infect other organs like spleen heart and glands sickle tonsils and thymus and during this severe uh, viremia and inflammatory stage various cytokines like interferon 1 tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 or interleukin 8 are released by activated t lymphocytes these cytokines will induce shock in birds and ultimately birds become lethargic, reluctant to move and finally it may lead to the death of the birds. Birds that are survive initial infections are immunosuppressed due to decreased humoral immunity as well as impaired cell mediated immunity and phagocytosis. Due to Decrease immunity, there will be a secondary bacterial, viral or other infections, it may lead to death of the animal. During viral, repl uh, viral replication in Bursa, there will be an antigen antibody complement complexes are formed and they are deposited into the Bursa. And this particular complexes will act as a chemotactive factors and it will attract various inflammatory cells at the site and this will also increase vascular permeability of the blood vessels and this will lead to edema, necrosis, hemorrhage and large number of heterophils infiltration in the bursa. Such type of reactions are known as Arthur's reactions or type 3 hypersensitivity uh, re reactivity hypersensitivity sorry and such type of type 3 hypersensitivity reactions are responsible for marked hemorrhagic edematous bursa. There will be also increased clotting time in infectious bursal disease and due to this increase in clotting time there will be a response there will be hemorrhage in different different organs. Particularly in, in one experimental studies, when they infect two week old chickens experimentally, after 72 hours post infection, there will be liver, there, the, there will be little complements, uh, there were little complements were present when compared with the eight week old chickens. And hence, two week old chickens will not develop arthritis reactions due to lack of sufficient complements and this while 8 week old chickens will develop arthritis type reactions due, due to sufficient complements present in the circulation. This is the reason why younger birds less than 3 weeks of age are less susceptible for the infections due to lack of complement they will not develop type 3 hypersensitivity reactions and there will be no enlargement of bursia as well as number of precursor B lymphocytes are also less so ultimately there will be 
low viral replication. Now clinical signs, incubation period of infectious bursal disease is 2 to 3 days. The earliest clinical signs is a wine picking. Birds will pick their own wines. Birds will show anorexia, depression, ruffled feather, soiled vent, white watery diarrhea, dehydration, trembling and it may show death. Now gross pathology. The gross pathology will depend upon the stage of infections. In early acute stage there will be enlargement of bursa and in chronic stage there will be atrophy of bursa. In early days between 3 to 5 days of infection the bursa may be enlarged about twice the normal and this is mainly due to the edema, due to necrosis, due to hemorrhages and slowly and slowly as um, time left this edematous fluid are actually reabsorbed and slowly and slowly most of the lymphocytes will show necrosis so ultimately there will be atrophy of bursa. This bursa will show necrotic foci as well as hemorrhages. As we have already discussed, this IBD virus are responsible for increased coagulative time, coagulation time. So ultimately there will be hemorrhage over the various organs and it includes thigh and pectoral muscles. You will find hemorrhages over the thigh and pectoral muscles. And occasionally the mucosa proventriculus will also show hemorrhages as well as intestinal mucosa will show mucus coat, coatation, coating. The spleen and liver may also get enlarged with small grey foci on the surface. Some birds, there will be accumulation of ureates in the kidney, result in enlarged or swollen kidney. And this lesion is attributed to enlarged bursa occlude the ureters and ultimately this will lead to accumulation of Edward crystals in the kidney. Here we can see this is a gross picture and this is very enlarged bursa, this is showing hemorrhages and this is very characteristic, very pathognomonic lesions of IBD. Bursa is enlarged but we have to remember this, this bursa will enlarge in acute condition only in initial 3 to 5 days sorry initial three to five days there will be edema there will be hemorrhage there will be necrosis and due to this edema and hemorrhage this bursa will get enlarged they will dark in color due to hemorrhages in particularly subclinical strain when they infect the birds uh, you will not find much amount of uh, hemorrhage and edema but due to lysis of precursor B lymphocytes you will find only atrophy as well as after three to five days and most of the sedimentous fluid are actually get reabsorbed at that care also you will find atrophic bursa in case of IBD virus infections due to problem in blood clotting mechanisms you will find widespread hemorrhage that includes various muscles here you can see this is hemorrhages over the thigh muscles as well as over the breast muscles. Here this is some other pictures and these all pictures are taken from the books or nets for educational purpose only. Here we can see also there is a hemorrhages over the thigh muscles and breast muscles. Now microscopic pathology. Again microscopic pathology are also depend upon stage of the infections either acute or chronic acute infections when bursa is enlarged and edematous in that case when you examine under microscope you will find degeneration and necrosis of precursor B lymphocytes there will be ample amount of infiltration of heterophils you may find hyperplasia of reticular endothelial cells as well as you will find variable amount of edema and hemorrhage in bursa in chronic stage, when bursa is get atrophied, 
when they get shrunken. In that case, you will find cystic cavity in the medullary region of the persia. You will find necrosis or phagocytosis of heterophils with intrafollicular fibroplasia means increased collagen and fibrous tissue between the follicles as well as you will find hyperplasia of partial epithelium with the formation of glandular structure. In spleen, sickle tonsil and thymus, in acute stage you will find either hyperplasia of reticular endothelial cells, in chronic stage you may find multifocal lymphoid necrosis. In kidney, you may find acute nephrosis due to occlusions of the ureter and this is characterized by a large tubular cast composed of homogeneous material and such type of materials are surrounding such type of materials you will find ample amount of heterophilic infiltration. Here you can see this is microscopic picture of Persia and in this in this uh, pictures you can able to appreciate interfollicular connected tissue are expanded by edema and many follicles contain congested blood vessels, hemorrhage, moderate numbers of inflammatory cells. Now diagnosis. Diagnosis can make on the basis of clinical signs, but they are not confirmatory, they are suggestive. Gross and microscopic lesions particularly are suggestive of this IPD mostly enlarged edematous hemorrhagic persia are considered as a pathognomic for IBD. For confirmation of this disease, you have to collect the cloacal persia and spleen and serological tests like agarjal immunodiffusion, antigen captured, enzyme leaked, immunosorbent assay, virus neutralization test and immunofluorescence or with the help of RT-PCR we can confirm the IBD. So this is all about infectious bursal disease. Thank you.